my name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman and Associates. Our firm has a primary focus on family law issues here in Michigan, and we're continuing our video series designed to educate our clients and our prospective clients uh, about family law issues. Today, we're going to talk about the interrelationship between a postpartum situation and an impending divorce. I'll tell you the scenario. Somebody gives birth, they have postpartum depression. We see this a lot. It's a well-known syndrome. Um, mom may be feeling very depressed um, as a result of the termination or ending of the pregnancy, even though the child is great, the child is healthy, the child's fantastic, but mom goes through this depression. And what happens when somebody goes through a depression? <clears throat> they may not be the easiest person to live with. It could very well impact an otherwise healthy relationship. If it comes up that you have that, what's the interplay between that and a pending divorce, particularly with respect to the custody of the child. And this is where you really got to be very careful. You got to be very careful because someone who's experiencing the postpartum and really at that particular moment might not want to have a whole lot to do with the child by reasons of the postpartum depression. That person might decide, oh, I'll give away my custody, I don't care. Only a year later to find out that she's cured and oh my God, what did I do? And you know what? Getting that custody back, that is not going to be easy. The best thing, the absolute best thing for you to do it in that circumstance, you need to share this with your lawyer. You need to tell your lawyer what's going on, and your lawyer will make sure that you get an appropriate documented diagnosis, which explains to the court your particular attitude uh, toward the child and how that is a function of postpartum. It's actually an illness, and once it passes, the normal feelings and reactions toward the child will kick in. The court needs to know that because the court needs to realize it's not some general apathy you have toward your children, it's how you're coping with this particular syndrome. It's very important to document that right off the bat. Therefore, it should be shared with your lawyer immediately. Your lawyer should interface with your doctor in order to make sure that the court is aware of what's going on <clears throat> so that there aren't any particular long-term uh, issues with custody. Now, it could impact short-term. The court may say, you know what, while you're having this problem, we're going to limit the parenting time or whatever. But don't make that the issue. There's a big picture here. This child was just born. The custody and the parenting time is going to last until the child's 18, maybe a little longer. So in that scenario, you always want to keep your eye on the big picture. Don't fight for the small item and jeopardize the larger item. So don't, if, if the court wants to go a little easier on the interim parenting time until you get better, use that as the opportunity to get better. And then come back to the court, and then you can say, look, judge, this is only a temporary thing. Here's the transcript. You said that this was only until such times I'm better. Thank God I got a clean bill of health. We want to resume normal custody. And you'll be in a much better position to do that than fighting a battle that you're going to lose on the interim issue while you're in the throes of a postpartum depression. If you have any questions about that, reach out. We'll be glad to help you out.